Hi, this is Annette Pasternak, a Stop Skin Picking Coach. Today I'm going to show you a brief history of BFRB research, a little timeline uh, from the Precision Medicine Initiative of the Trichotillomania or the TLC Foundation for Body Focused Repetitive Behaviors. I was at their conference in St. Louis this weekend and at the BPM talk, they gave out this handout, which is really cool, a little timeline of scientific research in the field and some other general discoveries just kind of to give it context, I guess. So we're going to look through this and this is the tall tales, the age of tall tales. In 400 BC, Hippocrates actually treated the first documented case of skin picking in a woman who groped about scratching and plucking out hair. He tells other healers to note whether he plucks his hair, picks at his skin, or weeps. So we're going to just go through the skin picking stuff here, the highlights. And then in 1875, a British surgeon Erasmus Wilson conducted the first major scientific report of skin picking disorder, calling it neurotic excoriation, which some people still refer to it as that. Um, says it's nearly impossible to control, describes it as characteristic of excessive warriors. Hmm, well, I know I used to be an excessive warrior. Uh, that can change. I don't worry nearly as much as I used to. But neurotic excoriation, that's not such a nice term, is it? In the 20s, there were kind of a lot of articles published highlighting hair pulling, nail biting, and skin picking, linking them to possible causes of sexual perversion, personality disorder, and hysteria. So this was the age of Freud, and you know this is kind of what I guess everyone seemed to be thinking. I would say that they were the crazy ones. Okay, what, are, what else do we have here? So we've got, um, following my post-its, yeah, 1991. So we took a big jump there, but not a lot happened with um, body-focused repetitive behaviors, especially skin picking. So in 1991, Christina Pearson founded the Trichotillomania Learning Center, TLC, which changed its name recently to uh, the TLC Foundation for Body-Focused Repetitive Behaviors to sort of include skin picking a little more. And they do a great job of um, the fun scientific research. They train uh, therapists to know what they're doing with these disorders. And they, what do you call it? There's just a lot of information that they put out and awareness. So go to the website bfrb.org to see a little more. Now in 1997, the first medication study of skin picking disorder was conducted. And they did find that fluoxetine was effective in a double blind test but it um from what you know has been gathered a little bit later it just seems like it works at first but not necessarily that well or for that long beyond those the initial kind of helpfulness so in 2001 dr cuthan developed the skin picking scale the first self-report specifically for skin picking disorder this is very important. Uh, if you're studying something, if you want to be scientific about it, you need a scale. You need some way to measure it. So this is a very important step in the coming research um, after 2001. And in 2002, this term body-focused repetitive behaviors was coined, or BFRBs. And the point was made by Dr. Woods that Hair pulling, nail biting, and skin picking are all similar behaviors and should be classified, diagnosed, and treated similarly. So that makes things a lot more um, interesting and cleaner. Like if we learn something about one of these disorders, there's a good chance it's going to apply. Um, it's not perfect. So you've noticed some differences, but you know it's it's okay. Uh, it helps. So in 2009, the first epidemiological study of skin picking disorder was published by Stefania Hayes, reporting that 62.7% of people engage in some degree of skin picking, and 5.4% would meet clinical criteria for skin picking disorder. So that's millions of millions of people have this disorder. And I mean, maybe more astonishing, I don't know, is that 62.7%, so most people do some amount of skin picking. 
So this is a normal behavior. It just um, gets out of control for some people and actually quite a lot of people. Um, in 2009, uh, there was a study that showed a significant genetic component to body focused repetitive behaviors, including skin picking disorder. So yeah, you might have noticed it runs in your family perhaps. 2013, the fifth edition of the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders was published. For the first time, skin picking disorder was included as a, a specific separate psychological disorder, um, part of the obsessive compulsive spectrum, which is also where they classified or reclassified trichotillomania. It used to be uh, called an impulse disorder, impulse control disorder. Now it's part of the obsessive compulsive spectrum. And of course, you know, this is just, well, I wouldn't say arbitrary exactly, but there's going to be some disagreement for all these things, always in science, you know. Okay, 2016, in Dr. Grant's study of NAC for skin picking disorder, 47% of patients are much or very much improved after 12 weeks of treatment. treatment. So this is an over-the-counter thing. You can go, at least in the U.S., you can go to any pharmacy. I mean, people take NAC for all kinds of things. And um, you can get that and try it and see if it works for you. I would look online, look up, um, you know, what, what they did, what are the dosages that you might want to take if you try it. Okay, well, um, thanks for hanging out with me today. Again, this is a, a pamphlet by the TLC Foundation for Body Focused Repetitive Behaviors. They are funding scientific research, including this precision medicine initiative. So if you're interested in contributing or learning more about it, just go to bfrb.org.